Hi, this is Jared. In this video, it's kind of a step number two. The most popular video I had so far was the Windows System Restore help video. If you're unable to use Windows System Restore because you can't boot your system, it blue screens on boot, just doesn't start all the way, whatever the case, or the system restore didn't have restore points to go back to or it aired out when it was trying to, all is not lost. The story did get more complex, but in this video, you're going to be able to use something that is both free and non-invasive. Don't got to get a screwdriver out or any of that kind of stuff. We're going to boot to a DVD or CD, depending on what you want to download. I downloaded a DVD image of a Linux operating system. It's going to boot entirely from that, not writing anything to the hard drive, and allow us to have an environment come up. And we might be able to go ahead and back up our files to another USB mass storage device, external drive, compact flash sticks, whatever you want to connect up here. The other benefit, if you can boot all the way up, is it'll prove to you your computer doesn't have a hardware problem because oftentimes you don't have a hardware problem. Sometimes you do, that's sad if that's the case, but if you can boot all the way up into this environment, your computer probably doesn't have a problem. Just may, may need Windows Reloaded only after we have securely backed up all the things that are important to you and this is one option for doing it. A video after this one will be a more invasive one. That's where we tear the hard drive out. We even scan it for viruses from another Windows computer. Yeah, that's not this video. This is a in-betweener step between that. Okay, so let's use our live patient. This tower is probably seven years old. It has Windows XP on it although the system restore is uh, on newer versions of Windows as well but we're resurrecting you know a dead computer here well a computer that won't boot all the way it exhibited viral like symptoms and when I took it on it wouldn't even boot into safe mode by that point so it degenerated by the time I arrived on the scene we're going to be booting to Nopix and we're going to connect up a flash memory stick that one's only one gigabyte I have a solid state hard drive here that's 64 gig. Just think of it as a really large memory stick. Before we do this, I did a little bit of prep so we wouldn't have to wait long. This has a burned DVD of Nopix in the second optical drive here. This is the one it boots to first on this computer. Not all computers are set to start to their optical drives, CD or DVD, whichever it is so you may have to do one of two things the nerdier one would be going to the BIOS and set it to start to either of those or if you have one just the one optical drive you have but the easy way to do it would be when your computer starts sometimes it flashes up a little key that let, gives you a one-time boot mem menu on this particular HP tower it's the escape key it'll actually say that on the splash screen and I'll try and catch a picture of that real quick just now other models of computers it's F12 you can always do a little bit of homework or it might splash it on the screen when it's starting so I'm gonna hit this button here and it's gonna start up here we'll get a blue HP screen I'll cut down to the bottom right corner really fast to let you see the escape boot menu key was there also the F1 uh, was visible Nopix is booting now. If you do nothing after a short period of time, it'll boot. At the bottom left, it says boot. You can hit the enter key to rush that along if you want, but it just went on its own. That's not that long a delay. It's going to go ahead and take a while for this to boot up. I will save us the time of watching that, and I'll be back with you in a moment when it's at the desktop. We are now at the desktop, but Nopix, it does sense uh, all the drivers of your system very well, much more so than, you know, a Windows Live, you know, like BART PE for XP would have. Those ones you have to cook them up and the driver support is harder to come by. These are very good. Unfortunately, it's at 1600 by 1200, so it looks really teeny tiny. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is hit one of these icons it is the third icon in here no that's the terminal one excuse me it is the last most icon and then I'll bring up something where I can go ahead and adjust the resolution here 
and I will go ahead and change the output to a resolution of 800 by 600 so we can see this better and then I'll hit the check mark at the upper left okay so now we can see more background looks a little weird but at least the fonts bigger alright so at the bottom left now that you can see it still a little bright here we have a start menu like icon gives us a start menu and next to it is a little file cabinet thing that's your file manager now I'll click once and then twice here once gets rid of the menu and then the second time launches it and we have a file manager with what we would expect to see HP Pavilion since this is an HP computer that's the label of the C drive but you'll notice in the Linux environment we don't get little handles like C drive, D drive, E drive doesn't give them letters it just makes it a mountable drive so we need to pick something to store our stuff on before we just go diving in there and browsing that on top of the computer we had these one little side note is that you should not care too much about what you have on your things you're about to rescue files with since this is Linux and it's not necessarily Windows natively uh, you may be putting your stuff at a slight bit of risk not really but you know don't put all your important stuff in one basket and expect to get it back so I pushed the memory stick in there got the SSD drive we're gonna go ahead and hunt that in as well okay except I won't leave it dangling alright so there we go we cruise back over to the screen here and you'll notice my drive that's an SSD I labeled it SSD when I formatted it and the one gigabyte stick I labeled it one gigabyte stick for my convenience yours might say a manufacturer name like SanDisk or Kingston or whatever memory stick you have and there you go so we'll get our mouse over here and we'll cruise to the C drive so this is my client's C drive now in the interest of their business I'm not going to go in and dig into their documents and settings if I were you know we go in there find their user account go to the my documents path and start rescuing their items but we'll just pick a folder like the NVIDIA video driver folder here and I'll right click on that and let's suppose that was their pictures or their documents and we'll choose copy we'll click on the one gigabyte stick and I already had some content on there. It says puppy story. My wife uh, had puppies with her favorite little dog here. So we have eight puppies in the house at the moment. I'll right click and hit paste. I only threw that folder on there just so you could see there was something already on the drive. So both of these are formatted as NTFS and it did it. And you notice that little flame when it was done. So, you know, it detects your video drivers just fine. We'll go to the SSD and it will mount up in just a moment here and it has puppy story as well we'll right click and hit paste and that will go ahead and copy over as well okay that's done now on the memory sticks you can right click on those and hit eject removable media or unmount unmount means it's just not going to leave it mounted but it doesn't necessarily finish writing to it now since that's a memory stick I can hit eject and it's ready to go. It's finalized writing to it. We got a blinking light on it. The stick is now dark. No little blinky light on the stick. And we can yank it out of the machine. This one, however, the SSD is a bigger external hard drive. And the only option it gives us is unmount the volume. But that's not going to finalize the writing sequence to it. So at this point, you've rescued the files you want. The safest way to make sure those get written all the way is probably just to shut down. You can tap the power button and it'll bring up the shut down dialog, or you can hit the start menu thingy at the bottom left there and choose log out, the bottom most feature. It'll bring up a dialog here shortly where we can shut down this computer. And we'll just pick shut down. As I was practicing for this video, it took about two minutes to finalize writing to the drive. 
so the content was viable. However, this one's shutting down a lot faster. Yeah, it proves me wrong. Well, anyways, that was an example of using Nopix to go ahead and back up some of your data. It's not scanning for viruses. For doing that, you should use Windows to scan for Windows viruses, because I don't really know of, and I could be wrong, something good out there in the Linux realm to go ahead and let you scan for viruses. So, that's... Uh, that's the simple video number two. I hope that's helpful for you and it doesn't cost you anything. Just to just download something and burn a DVD or CD and you're good. So use that with caution and I hope it helps you out. I'll get the next video done shortly. God bless.